Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mama Vic channel. And on this video, if you're new to this channel, we talk about cryptocurrencies, we talk about real world use cases of digital currencies, and we like to look at trends of this crypto space and where it's going. Of course, normally sometimes I start by reviewing the market, not really reviewing, but seeing the state of the market. Of course, we're seeing a bloodbath. We're seeing red in the market, and it's almost pointing towards the beginning of a bear market. I mean, look at this. This is brutal. Ethereum jumped all of a sudden from 3,800 to 3,400. Bitcoin's all the way down to 43,000. But hey, I'm not here to talk about the. Now, the interesting thing is even the stable coins started off by dropping a tremendous amount, and they then they're recovering right now. Of course because people are selling their assets and moving them back into stable coins. That's why you're seeing stable coins bouncing back up and soon they'll actually appear in red uh, with respect to the rest of our market. So not very beautiful times. We've seen some major sell-offs, but that is the state of the market. That is crypto. Uh, sometimes things go up sometimes, uh, and similarly things have to go down. So in today's video, I really just want to cover a couple of articles that are going to help us put a couple of things into perspective in terms of the trend at least to see some of the news and catch up to some of the things and to see what the people are talking about and in this first article here we see that bitcoin etf decision delayed by the sec commissioner and wonders why so in a blow for bruce bitcoin bulls the long-awaited ny dig bitcoin etf has suffered another setback so i'm not going to read this whole thing but sort of this first uh, paragraph the united states securities and exchange commission has postponed its decision to approve NYDIG's spot exchange traded fund ETF for Bitcoin BTC delaying until March 16th. So in a notice published on Tuesday, so of course we'll keep seeing, I think they, they pushed it to March. So I think that's what it said. Uh, uh, the SEC found it appropriate to designate a longer period within which an issue, uh, within which to issue an order approving or disapproving the ETF. Upon news, BTC's price didn't flinch, remaining in its tightly coiled range under forty-seven thousand. So this was delayed until March the sixteenth. So in a promise. Um, in a promising turn of events, an SEC bigwig has been vocal in support of a spot ETF which, uh, while crypto enthusiasts are used uh, to rejections and delays in BTC spot ETFs, the SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce also wonders why it's taking so long. So there's the SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce, there's Gary Gensler, who's the head of the uh, SEC, and there's uh, a lot of controversy around this Securities Commission in the United States in terms of how they're pushing their regulation, in terms of how they're not pushing their regulation and many argue that the way they're sort of um, um, wanting to overlook this whole space or uh, regulate this whole space the crypto space as one entity is creating it's creating overheads it's uh, slowing down the innovative process in the united states uh, because uh, the type of regulations and regulation is enforced regulation and it seems to be favoring certain parties of others so there's a lot of controversy uh, attached around the sec and around and about how it's approaching this regulatory framework especially in the united states around the crypto space um, especially so keep keep your eye on the news and in another article we see that DAOs this is decentralized autonomous organizations are the foundation of web 3 the creator economy and the future of work so DAOs are defining a defining construct for everything that comprises a new decentralized internet or web 3 in the emerging crypto economic system so of course in this article they're talking about everything web 3 at least as far as we know it right now uh, all the way from DeFi to nfts to lending to borrowing to all these kinds of protocols um essentially you have this democratized governance governance of technology or finance uh, where most of the activities that would have been um uh, under uh, auditing, uh, human auditing and auditing farms and all this, all this is automated through smart contracts and through this technology, this transparent and secure technology, that this immutable technology that has evolved uh, with blockchain technology. So decentralized autonomous organizations, basically the purpose of them is to encompass all the activities or most of the activities, day-to-day -day act financial activities and put them in one automated system where you don't have a third party uh, uh, player governing or determining a decision 
deciding the rules, making the rules of who should make transactions of which amount. Uh, in the crypto space, you can do whatever because the blockchains read uh, what they do is they, they transfer ownership from one uh, uh, point or one person or one user or one entity to another. And usually the decimals of division are much, much bigger as well. So like a dollar, you can have maybe $1.20, $1.25 in crypto. The decimal extends all the way to 18. So that can that has its own advantages in terms of doing things like microtransactions. So decentralized autonomous organizations essentially encompass, encompass all these ideas and put them in a material form. Okay, so more adoption news we can see moneygram invests in bitcoin kiosk operator coin me so the remittances giant you all know moneygram has acquired a four percent stake in coin me to support i hope i'm reading that right coin me to support the bitcoin exchange's growth plans so moneygram has acquired a four percent stake in coin me the moneygram transferring company said the investment will support the bitcoin to uh, the Bitcoin to cash exchanges growth plans. CoinMe currently operates in 48 US states and aims to expand internationally. So we're seeing uh, more attempts or more attempts at adoption from the traditional legacy companies trying not to uh, uh, make themselves irrelevant in this crypto space. And we've seen MoneyGram really pushing this. And at some point, we've seen the past partnerships in, with MoneyGram and some crypto companies push up their share price, their stock price, because their, I guess, users are excited about that kind of news. So as a MoneyGram as a company that's that's competing with Western Union, I don't know if they're together or not, but basically they're really trying to get into that crypto space. So I don't know whether secretly Western Union owns MoneyGram and MoneyGram is like the testing uh, infrastructure for them to maybe finally adopt crypto who knows maybe moneygram is its own separate entity but what we see is that these are two separate money remittances services and one is is really trying to uh, get get into the understanding of this crypto space by trying out different partnerships with stellar lumens with repo in the past and now they're purchasing also they're stretching out their hands into the bitcoin ecosystem okay uh certic i've talked about certic many many times so basically uh, before I go into before I go into this headline, uh, Certic and there's so many other crypto companies, or not necessarily crypto, but mostly crypto native companies that are coming out there to be uh, to play the role of auditing firms. So those that do not know, uh, in cryptocurrencies, there are things called smart contracts, and these smart contracts are basically are imprinted onto the blockchain, and they're supposed to be immutable. And this is how most of the governance, financial uh, governance or financial structures and these things called DeFi, decentralized finance, that's how they run through things called smart contracts. So someone that creates a smart contract can create a smart contract can create a backdoor that can be uh, exploited uh, for their own benefits, which can lead to tremendous amount of losses. And as we've seen many, many cases in the past one year and even before. So as a result, you have these companies that are coming up specifically to target this space of <clears throat> auditing smart contracts and technology around blockchains that are, that's being created, that's uh, touting itself to be decentralized. So Certic is one of those big, those companies making um, headwings in this space. So Certic identifies Arbix Finance as a rug pull, warns users to stay clear. So rug pull is when someone creates a decentralized finance platform and as people get in their money there, lock their money there to earn yields and as they <clears throat> earn in this token, the native token of that platform, the initial creators of the platform sell um, on everyone. They dump on everyone. The price crashes and then they run away. Sometimes they even close the site. So blockchain security farm Certic warns users to stop interacting with Arbix Finance as they have identified the project as a rug pull. So of course, guys, we can see this kind of thing. Maybe you might be a legitimate company, but this company claiming to be decentralized can just call you out and that can completely destroy you. So of course, in a decentralized space, the users determine their own. But if a company like this says hey be careful i think it's best to listen so the 4.5 million minted tokens were then dumped yeah i didn't even have to read this so they minted so many tokens and as users start buying them and and getting and boarding on onboarding onto this ecosystem they dump these tokens the price crashes they get away with the profit and the users are left holding bags so in another article
Okay, I think that's enough about that. Three reasons why Cosmos Atom price is near to an all-time high. So those that have been watching this channel, I talk about Cosmos quite a bit because it's one of those blockchains that has really uh, created a very interesting and very much usable technology when it comes to connecting blockchains and, this, and the aspect of interoperability. So this article is mostly pointing to the fact that there seems to be some hope with true integration of Ethereum standards like the Ethereum virtual machine compatibility and other creating that interoperability with Ethereum. So we've seen some projects like Ethermint develop on the Cosmos uh, chain, but we have, uh, we can see at evmos.org is an application agnostic Cosmos chain. The evmos.org will be interoperable with Ethereum or the EVM virtual machine compatible environments and other chains like the Inter Blockchain Communication Protocol, which is built on the, with the Cosmos Software Development Kit, making it easy to move value across chains. So this has, uh, we've seen the Cosmos uh, token, the main Cosmos token, which is the Atom token, but other tokens can be created. We've seen it move up in price. I think people are really excited with the advancements in terms of and the milestones that these people keep crashing the the cosmos people so they keep achieving they keep achieving these milestones in a real meaningful way so we can see that uh, cosmos theta upgrade will potentially enable meta transactions nft modules interchain accounts liquid staking this is where you can uh, leverage your staked tokens without unstaking them um, the cosmosm instance on the hub so this is cosmosm is normally used for designing smart contracts on the cosmos ecosystem and upgrades to the gravity bridge so this is mostly uh, mostly goes into DeFi and into operability and then uh, in our second last article samsung announces an nft platform for smart tvs upcoming samsung smart tvs will have a built-in platform where users can browse buy and sell nfts so i guess similarly to platforms like OpenSea, which are some of the biggest nft trading platforms some of these uh, uh technologies like samsung are going to embed the ability to, to purchase and trade and sell and even probably mint NFTs in the future. So very, very positive news for the whole crypto space. Of course, everything, most things are just profit driven and network effect and attracting more and more people to your technology. And then the last article, top five cryptocurrencies to watch for in 2022. Uh, we have here, whoever wrote this article, Rakesh Apadwav, this is on Cointelegraph. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, uh, BNB, which is the Binance uh, Ledger main token. Um, so the Binance Smart Chain, the Binance Ledger, uh, because Binance is built using the Cosmos ecosystem, it, it's interoperable. So the BNB token is the main token that governs all that. It even governs the centralized Binance exchange. We have AVAX, which is Avalanche and Matic. So each of these tokens, Bitcoin, of course, you all know Bitcoin. Ethereum, the first one to come up with smart contracts in the way we know them today. Binance or BNB, the the biggest token for an exchange and also the first one to really emerge as a competitor to the ethereum network though a lot of people like to pretend to ignore it avax avalanche big institutions but also uh, uh, some of the biggest uh, com w contenders when it comes to com uh, contending with ethereum and then matic is, is a love child when it comes to scaling ethereum it's loved in the ethereum ecosystem and the whole crypto space so that is polygon matic so i guess there's a reason as to why this particular person is bullish on this okay so guys that's all i have to you today that's that is pretty much a summary of what is happening in the crypto space and where people's where people are thinking where um, everyone's hoping the crypto space would go at least uh, briefly so DeFi, uh, decentralized autonomous organizations, uh, uh, self-serving um, auditing firms in the crypto, uh, not self-serving, but rather automated auditing firms and some uh, bullish cryptocurrencies. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.